This is Shelley Duvall's Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs by Fairy Tale Theatre. A kind queen pricks her finger and wishes for a child with lips a deep red, hair as black as the wood on her window frame, that's a new one, and skin as white as- stop, no, don't lick- oh, that's an open wound, now it's infected, this is why you don't survive the story. <clears throat> the queen gave birth to Snow White. After the queen died, some time later, from anything, it didn't have to be an infection, it could have been from something else, the king married again. The new queen was very beautiful. Lest you forget, she will talk of her beauty several times throughout the story. My cheekbones, high, it was a gentle roundness. Exquisite lashes that allow me to coyly lower my lids without fear. My lips were soft. My skin could be satin. Oh, the curves and hollows of my neck. The gentle arching of my eyebrows fascinates me. My hair, the softness, the perfection as it touches my forehead. When the magic mirror tells the queen that Snow White is more fair, the queen orders the royal huntsman to kill Snow White and bring back her heart. Moved by Snow White's prayers, the huntsman decides he cannot kill her. He tells Snow White her stepmother had given him the orders and warns her never to return to the castle. Snow White receives this news well, I suppose. She has a blank look on her face the entire time. I don't know why, her acting isn't too bad the rest of the time. Snow White finds a cottage and helps herself to dinner and a bed. The seven dwarves return to their cottage. Because the dwarves always have to have some sort of gimmick, the dwarves' names all start with the letter B. They find Snow White, but let her sleep. Oh yes, let her sleep in my bed. When she wakes up, she explains her situation. She offers to cook and mend and clean if they let her stay. She tells them she can make a bed on the floor and not take any of theirs. They put it to a vote. With six to one, Snow White can stay. As the dwarfs walk to work, they pass their friend, a prince who sits in the forest and sings and plays music. He sings of a princess he has yet to meet. I sing in the valley, I sing in the wood, I sing for a true love all day. Presumably, this is all the prince ever does. The dwarfs do not tell the prince about Snow White, fearing she would leave them. The queen has discovered the truth, that Snow White is alive. She disguised herself as a peddler woman selling ribbons and laces. The queen ties the ribbons around Snow White too tightly, and she falls to the ground. The dwarfs return home that night and remove the ribbons in a merry maypole sort of way, and Snow White wakes up. The dwarfs warn her to stay in the house and not to talk to strangers. The next morning, the magic mirror tells the queen that Snow White is alive. So enraged, the queen throws a pillow and disguises herself once more. As she goes to the dwarf's cottage, the queen passes the prince, who is, you can probably guess, again singing about wanting to meet a princess. I find it difficult to believe a man such as yourself could ever be lonely. Ah, uh, it's a sad but true, fruit woman. Forgetting she does not appear as her usual beautiful self, the queen shoots her shot. She hurries off when she sees her reflection and remembers her appearance. The dwarfs still don't tell the prince about Snow White, because they would miss her if she went away. At first, Snow White refuses to talk to the queen or eat the apple. After the queen takes a bite, Snow White is convinced it is safe, but it is not. The dwarfs return home and find Snow White apparently dead. Deeming Snow White too beautiful to bury, the dwarfs build a coffin of glass and begin to carry her to the highest hill. On their way, of course, they meet their friend, the prince. They set down the coffin, and the prince admires Snow White's beauty. The dwarfs wish they had told the prince about Snow White, realizing it could have saved her life. As they pick up the coffin and continue walking, the dwarfs stumble and fall, dropping it. The prince had made no offer to help them carry Snow White, because all he does is sit in the forest and sing. When Snow White is jostled, 
The apple falls from her mouth and she regains consciousness. The prince declares his love and asks her to marry him. Will you be my wife? Yes. I realize you must have some time to think it over. Yes. Yes. And you and I will be married. Right. Snow White and the prince marry. They invite their seven friends to the castle every week. The prince tells his court magician about the evil queen. The magician punishes the queen by having every mirror she looks at turned to black so that she can no longer see her beautiful face. I'd put this movie as a 7 out of 10. I like it. It's not too long. Nothing drags. Snow White and the dwarves have an enjoyable friendship. The prince doesn't do anything. I only give him a pass because it's Rex Smith, and he was in The Pirates of Penzance, which is the best movie. The movie has funny moments and some sweet ones. If you're looking for something fun and lighthearted, you'd probably enjoy this. You'd probably enjoy the other movies by Shelley Duvall's Fairy Tale Theater as well. Although, some of them are a bit strange. If you want more of a comedy, or something darker or more serious, or a movie where the main characters have more of a proactive role, then this movie would be rated lower for you. Thank you for watching. Tasty. What is that about? What? My whole life you've been trying to get me to taste blood. Every time I cut myself or scrape myself, it was, ah, uh, Sean, taste it, lick it. It'll make it feel better. It does. Lick it. 